Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very special edition of the 2021 Annual High School Ceramics Exhibition. My name is Beth Ann Gerstein, and I'm the Executive Director of AMOCA. Joining me today to celebrate the next generation of ceramic talent from across the United States is my colleague, Ashley Rowley. Thank you, Beth Ann. I'm the Education Manager here at AMOCA, and I want to take this opportunity to invite you to support the high school exhibition and other programs like this by becoming a member of AMOCA. You can sign up for membership on our website. Also, check out some of our other virtual exhibitions while you're there. I would also love to take a moment to invite all of our high school students in this exhibition to apply for Teen Council for the 2021 through 2022 school year. I am so very impressed with all of the work and applications we've seen in our high school exhibition, and I would love the opportunity to work with you personally this coming year and to be a part of your growth artistically and professionally. Applications are available online and will be linked on the high school exhibitions page. Thank you, Ashley. It's been a joy to work with you on this exhibition. I would also like to thank Paul Roach, AMOCA's Director of Advancement and Communications for his work on this project. We're also grateful to the Dew Foundation for their support of the high school exhibition and general operations that support AMOCA. The Dew Foundation helps charitable organizations meet pressing needs, fulfill vital missions, and promotes the common good worldwide. When the museum closed due to COVID in 2020, we moved the high school exhibition online. We determined that the 2021 exhibition would also be virtual, allowing us to open applications to ceramic students from across the country, not just Southern California. AMOCA is young, like many of you here today. We opened in 2003, founded and guided by the vision of Julianne and David Armstrong, patrons of the art who believe, as we do, that clay is central to the human experience. Your participation is a testament to the success of that vision. And it is my joy to honor so many young ceramic artists in the 2021 high school exhibition. Thank you to all the students who submitted their work for consideration for the exhibition. And thank you also and especially to the teachers who I know have been asked to be incredibly flexible and creative this past year of distance and hybrid teaching. If there's anything we can do to support you, please let us know. Before we head into the awards, I wanna share a little bit about myself. The high school exhibition is especially near and dear to my heart. In 1923, the Alliance for Young Artists and Writers organized their first exhibition and award program. The Alliance understood that there are awards for high school students who excel academically and in sports, but rarely in the arts. More than 40 years ago, I participated in one of their exhibitions on the East Coast with my high school work, and I even won an award and it was incredibly meaningful to me, even today. I believe that even if you do not choose a career in the arts, being a creative thinker and creative problem solver will have a wonderful impact on your future. The artwork you will see online was selected as part of a jurying process. The jurors were Nathan Stanfield, Amoka's exhibition and studio manager, Ashley Rowley, and myself. We received 182 applications from 39 different schools in 18 different states. So competition was incredibly strong. The jurors narrowed down the selection to 101 artworks. From this group, awards were selected in three categories. We combined 9th and 10th grade awards, 11th grade awards, and 12th grade awards. Artworks were reviewed on the merits of technique, design, form, and color. They were also reviewed based on their creativity, concept, and or narrative. One best in show and several honorable mentions will be recognized in each of three categories. In addition, the artists awarded best in show will receive a cash award and a one-year membership to AMOCA at the family level in recognition of their achievements. As we announce the pieces recognized for distinction, we will talk about some of the aspects the jurors recognized in their decision. We encourage your comments and questions in the feed. Thank you, Ashley. And now on to the awards, frankly, my favorite part. Starting with the ninth and 10th grade awards, the first honorable mention is for Hand and Heart by Jeremy Park from Bellarmine College Preparatory. Hands are some of the most difficult objects to sculpt accurately. 
and I was very impressed with the level of precision with which Park articulated the hand and the heart in this piece. I appreciate the choice to create a realistic heart, but to also incorporate the heart symbol as a part of it. Our next ninth and 10th grade honorable mention award is Phoenix by Mariah Storm from El Toro High School. The detail in this piece is fabulous, but what really stood out to me was the diversity of colors the student achieved even in the individual feathers. Storm used the Raku firing technique, which creates the diversity of colors through the interaction of fumes with the glazed surface. In essence, Raku is when pots are taken from the kiln while they're still glowing red hot and then placed in material that is able to catch fire easily, such as sawdust or newspaper. The reason for this is to starve the pot of oxygen, which gives the glaze a wonderful variety of colors as shown fantastically in this piece. Our next ninth and 10th grade award is an honorable mention for Gargoyle by Mercedes Roy from Shenango Valley Central School District. In order to create a face with cartoonish proportions that's still a believable character, the artist must have a good understanding of human anatomy. Roy did a fantastic job creating believably distorted face on this piece. The individual features are wrinkled in ways that are similar but exaggerated versions of wrinkles seen regularly on a human face. I also appreciate the detail in the surface decoration. The use of color to emphasize the high and low points on this work helped to make this face more believable. And now, the best of show for ninth and 10th grades. I'm pleased to announce Japanese Oni Mask by Zoe Carmack from El Toro High School. Congratulations, Zoe. Historically, Japanese Oni are some of the greatest icons of Japanese folklore. Traditionally, Oni are born when truly wicked humans die and end up in one of the many Buddhist hells. Transformed into Oni, they become the ogreish and brutal servants of the ruler of hell. Over time, Oni masks were used in plays and performances to represent the villains and eventually became symbols of protection used to frighten away evil spirits. Carmack has done a wonderful job capturing all aspects of a traditional Oni mask in this piece. Oni traditionally have red or blue skin, two or more horns, large tusks, and wild hair. What really caught my attention about Zoe's piece was the beautiful surface decoration of the mask. The blue highlights with the dark black color help to create depth and show the details of the face. I also appreciate the subtle cracking in the tusks mimicking age. Great job, Zoe. And now onto the awards for students in the 11th grade. The first honorable mention is for Picky Bear by Naomi Pasmino from Herbert Hoover High School. I love the playfulness of this piece. The story told is delightful, and Pasmino's precision in crafting each food object really impressed me. Great job, Naomi. The second honorable mention for 11th grade is for Tally All the Things Donut Teapots by Dylan Mealy from Flintridge Prep School. The donut shape at the center of the teapot is a difficult shape for any potter to throw. The precision of creating working teapots requires planning and forethought to make an elegant and functional form. What really draws me to this set is the upward energy created by the angle of the spout in these pieces. Fabulous job, Dylan. The last honorable mention for 11th grade is Samurai by David Aguilar from El Toro High School. I love the humor in this work. 
I appreciate the mottled skin and correctly represented pupils. The active position of the frog drawing their sword creates a bit more tension in the work that matches the frog's expression. Overall, Aguilar did a great job rendering this piece. And the best of show for 11th grade is Food for Thought by Kobe Chen from St. George's School. Congratulations, Kobe. I love the concept of this work with the head eating and being eaten out of, like they're wrestling with their thoughts. What really impressed me about this work was the way you made the chopsticks appear to float in the air. Great job on this piece, both in concept and execution. And now on to the awards for students in 12th grade. The first honorable mention is Circle Teapot and Cup by Olivia Bochnik from Shenango Valley Central School District. This form is a very difficult form for a potter to throw on the wheel. And Bochnik did a fantastic job incorporating it into a teapot form. I love the choice to use multiple corks as the lid and the color choice of the corks with the color of the lip of the spout of the teapot. Wonderful piece overall. The second honorable mention for 12th grade is Sunset Over Ocean by Marshall Smith from Flintridge Prep School. In this piece, Smith does a fantastic job breaking down the organic concept of a sunset into abstract geometric shapes. What really makes this piece recognizable is the beautiful glaze choices creating that gradient from top to bottom. It can be extremely difficult to create a fade using glazes, especially while mixing or having overlap between those glazes. This shows an impressive amount of forethought and understanding of the way that these glazes interact to create this finished work. The third honorable mention for 12th grade is out with the Old, In with the New by Amelia Booth from Franklin D. Roosevelt High School. Art is often used as a storytelling device, a narrative to convey the artist's ideas and feelings. In this work, I love how Booth used recognizable objects arranged in an unexpected way to tell her story. This contrast of death with new life using clay as a foundation with the addition of mixed media creates a very strong and successful image. I also love the delicate wash Booth used over the surface of the school to create depth in her shadows. Fantastic job. And finally, the best of show for 12th grade is Dissolution by Tristan Archer from Pelham High School. Congratulations, Tristan. Everything about this piece, from the rendering, to the surface decoration, to the storytelling is phenomenal. Archer does a fantastic job creating a connection between these two figures. I am absolutely stunned by the maturity and power of this work. Congratulations again. Congratulations again to all of our award winners and all of the students who participated in this exhibition. You can see all the works on this exhibition on AMOCA's website. It is our belief here at the American Museum of Ceramic Art that clay is central to the human experience. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the accomplishments of the next vanguard of emerging ceramic talents. If you enjoyed this exhibition as much as we did, consider becoming a member. We need your support now more than ever. Membership information and a link to the online exhibition can be found at amoca.org. Thank you from all of us, and we look forward to seeing you at the museum.